Okay, fats are quite interesting because most people uh, think of fats as bad. And there are some bad fats, there are some ugly fats, but there are also some good fats. So the good and bad and the ugly fats, uh, briefly. Um, the good fats are, are what we call essential fats. And these are fats that are um, that the body needs a bit like vitamins and minerals. And they form two groups, uh, uh, which are commonly known as the omega-3 fats, which come from oily fish and some nuts and seeds, and the omega-6 group, which come from other vegetable oils, um, things like palm oil and sunflower oil, for example. Um, the, uh, so those are the good fats. The bad fats typically are thought of as saturated fats. And the difference between the good and the bad, if you like, is that the, the, the good fats are unsaturated. They've got, which all that means is that the, in the fatty acid, uh, long carbon uh, chain, which, is a, which forms a fatty acid, that an unsaturated fat has got a double bond in that chain, or more than one double bond in that chain. Whereas a saturated fat has no double bonds in the chain. That's, 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 that's really the technical difference between it. Saturated fats, the reason why they're thought of as bad is is that it's, it's the fat that is part of the fat that is stored in our body. Um, and obviously the more of that fat you consume, um, the, the easier it is for your body to store it. And a good example of saturated fat would be come from butter or from cheese. So if you, um, if you take a large uh, piece of, uh, of, of cheese and so forth, it's going to be about 70% of, of saturated fat by weight. So it's, very, it's, it's, it's a huge amount of fat. Uh, and fat's not all bad, but obviously if you're not training hard, that fat will tend to get stored away you know, uh, inside as, as body fat. Um, the ugly fats are, for me, are the man-made fats, the trans and hydrogenated fats. And these fats have been used in, um, uh, in food preparation really to try and stabilise uh, the fat content of food to give longer shelf life. That's what, how they were, what they were really designed for doing. So it means that if you get processed foods, so processed cakes, for example, they often use trans and hydrogenated fats to give those cakes much longer shelf life because those fats are resistant to oxidisation. And when fats get oxidised, they become rancid. And obviously, once fats become rancid, you can't eat the food. So the way the manufacturers have got around that is by um, is by making them more resistant to that oxidation by, by creating these man-made fats. So in terms of recovery, uh, where, do, where do we sit with fats? Well, we think that um, obviously you, you should avoid trans and hydrogenated, the man-made type of fats. Um, saturated fat, do you need to avoid it? Well, it depends a little bit on the volume of exercise and things, the sort of, sort of training that you're doing. If you're an endurance-based athlete, some saturated fat in your, in, your, uh, in your diet or a slightly higher amount of saturated fat will not be a bad thing because actually at lower intensities of exercise, so when you're jogging uh, and, and, and cycling, you'll be burning fat as a primary source of fuel. It's only at the higher intensities of exercise that you start to burn sugar as a primary source of fuel. Um, so some saturated fat for, for endurance-based athletes in their diet is not a bad thing at all because they'll be burning it off if they're doing large, large volumes of training. For many of us, though, who either play power-based sports, so if you play you know, uh, rugby, for example, or if you're um, weightlifting or going to the gym and so forth, where you're doing short bouts of very high intensity exercise, in that period of time, you're primarily going to be burning sugar as a source of fuel. So we probably want to limit the amount of saturated fat that we take on board if we're worried about, our own, about storing uh, fat away as body fat. The essential fats you absolutely do need. Now, the importance about the essential fat is actually the ratio of the essential fats. In, if we went back um, uh, 50 or 100 years, it is thought that the ratio of our intake of the essential fats, the omega-3 to the omega-6, was 1 to 2. So for every gram of omega-3, we've got 2 grams of omega-6. Now in our diets, because in, as a consequence of what happened in the 60s, where, um, where there was a study that suggested that higher levels of cholesterol were the cause of heart disease and saturated fat, uh, high levels of saturated fat drove high levels of cholesterol, um, there was a big drive to try and reduce saturated fat from our diet. So we stopped using lard as a product for, to cook with, we stopped using butter, we, used, we moved to margarines, and, 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 and particularly we moved to using vegetable oils, which were thought to be heart healthy. Um, and there's some truth in the matter to, to a degree, but the, the problem is reducing all those 
um, taking out all that saturated fat. The saturated fat is very inert. It, it goes to get stored and used as energy. It doesn't get, uh, or still gets used structurally, but it doesn't get used for anything else. Whereas the omega-3 and the omega-6 fats are not inert. They go to make hormones in the body. And the omega-6 fat tend to make pro-inflammatory hormones, and the omega-3 fats tend to make anti-inflammatory hormones. So this balance in between pro-inflammation and anti-inflammation is obviously very important when you cut your finger and, you, and, it, and it bleeds, obviously what you want is some pro-inflammatory response to start the healing process. When the, when the, when the, when the uh, cut is then healed, you want an anti-inflammatory response to stop the healing process so that, um, so that it, you, you don't end up with a big keloid scar and, and, and things going wrong. So there is a natural balance in our body between pro-inflammatory hormones and anti-inflammatory hormones. The, in the way that we've chosen to eat over the last 30 years, actually there is now the belief that we have uh, we've consumed too many pro-inflammatory hormones. So we're consuming much more omega-6 than we used to in the past. And the ratios that we see when we test athletes and the general population, rather than having one gram of omega-3 to two grams of omega-6, we're now seeing one gram to 15 grams, or one gram to 20 grams, or one gram to 50 grams. Right? So massive, massive differences in, the, in these ratios. What difference does that make? What, what are we seeing clinically? Well, I think the major thing that we see clinically today are changes in the, uh, in the instance of things like eczema, asthma, hay fever, and all the other uh, ato atopic disorders. Certainly when I was at school, um, uh, there was sort of, in my year, there were 100 children and one child had asthma, and he was very well known, and he had the inhalers, obviously, if he became short of breath, um, uh, we had to get a teacher to, to um, uh, to give them an inhaler. In my children's class now, as many as 3 in 10 have asthma. So the incidence of asthma, eczema, hay fever, a lot of the other inflammatory disorders like arthritis, um, uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, uh, irritable bowel disorders, all seem to be increasing. And um, we're not sure why this is, but one of the hypotheses is because of this change in our omega 3 to omega 6 ratio. Now, if you're an athlete or if you're playing sport, what, does it, what, what difference does it make? Well, obviously, we know that training is a pro-inflammatory uh, um, process. As we train, we damage our muscles to a degree because that's part of what we're trying to do to make the muscles get bigger and adapt. Similarly, as we train, we put trauma to, to our joints. Even in non-contact sports, just running obviously causes trauma to the joints as they, as they get compounded and so forth. But if you then play a contact sport, so if you play a sport where, where like judo or karate or rugby or so forth, or even if you, if you, if you just go kayaking where you, you can get knocked and bumped around, then if you're in, in, a, in a sport where there is a lot of pro-inflammatory triggers around and your body is in a, in a more pro-inflammatory state, it may mean that we, we will see more inflammatory disorders, more inflammatory problems. So for me, getting your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is really important. You can have this tested but it is very expensive at the moment to have it tested. So the, the simple messages you could take away uh, and things that people can do are you can move away from using omega-6 as a, as, a, as, a, as a food product and use an omega-9 fat, which is olive oil. So stop using the sunflower oil and palm oil and, and margarines and use olive oil. And maybe with a little saturated fat, so maybe a bit of butter, so a combination of olive oil and a little bit of butter wouldn't be such a bad thing to do. And make sure you, you get at least the government recommended daily intake of your essential fats from, 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 um, from fish, which is, uh, which is four portions of oily fish a week if you're, not, uh, if you're not considering being pregnant or if you're not pregnant. Why is the government limited um, omega-3 three intake from oily fish to four portions a week? It's limited it because the seas, unfortunately today, are so polluted that if you take more than that, you'll get heavy metal toxicity. Um, and we know that from two sources. One is that um, the, the government recommendations come because to, to protect uh, women who are pregnant um, uh, and carrying an unborn fetus because that fetus's brain gets damaged by those heavy metals and there is now clear evidence if they consume more than two portions a week that they can get uh, fetal abnormalities as a consequence of, uh, of, of consuming heavy metals from these oily fish. Um, and the other, the other comes from the testing that we've done where we've, we've taken uh, individuals who've decided that they want to <coughs> increase their omega-3 intake by consuming lots of mackerel and we've then tested them for heavy metals like mercury and demonstrated mercury to 
toxicity in them. So I have absolutely no doubt if you consume large amounts of mackerel and herring and sardines, whilst they're fantastically great fish to consume in moderation, if you consume large amounts because our seeds are so polluted that you'll end up with heavy metal toxicity. So the final way around that may be to think about taking an omega-3 supplement.